Hello, friends. I, yeah, nice to meet you all here. Um, thanks for the uh, invitation. I'm very honored to, to be here to share my understanding on the recent development of philanthropy uh, in China. Uh, as I worked at the China Donors Roundtable, uh, it's a platform of uh, funding foundations, of grant makers in China. So my sharing will mainly focus on the recent development of granting makers in China. Uh, okay. Uh, in the recent years, the China have witnessed a very rapid growth of philosophy. Um, Especially in the 2000, 2004, the central government of China have published a regulation on foundations. And the, uh, this regulation lower the requirement uh, to, uh, for the private corporations, for the uh, millionaires to uh, register a foundation. And after uh, the regulation published, hundreds of foundations was established in one year. Well, each year there will be hundreds of foundations established. And then uh, in this year, in 2016, China have more than uh, 5,000 foundations now in China. And also in this year, the National, uh, the National Congress of uh, China government have published a new law, the uh, philosophy law. And uh, uh, from now on, all the foundations, including the private foundations, including also the NGOs, have the rights to raise the funds from the public people. So uh, in my own opinion, perhaps this law will be another uh, positive force to push forward the further development of China philosophy in the next few years. So I think the rapid uh, the, uh, growth will be, must, uh, be faster afterwards. The growth is very rapid, but it's uneven. More than half of the foundations are located on the east coast of China, mostly in three provinces, in Beijing, Jiangsu, Zhejiang, and Guangdong province. These uh, uh, four provinces are most rich in China, but in the west China, in the middle China, and also at the north China, there's uh, very few foundations, and also the NGOs are also very few. So there, in this area, their uh, philosophy resources are very limited. Another problem is that, oh, another problem, I think it's very, another big problem is that <coughs> major foundations are operating foundations. Few of them make grants. And there are lots of uh, NGOs in China, and the grant makers are limited. So the condition of the NGOs there are very, uh, very bad. In 2016, uh, in 2013, and 2015, the last year, I and my some of my friends have do some invest investigation. We sampled about 2,100 active NGOs and send uh, the questionnaire to them and uh, collect some information. We are about ask them where you get your funds, including the China foundations and also the overseas foundations, and how much fund you get from them. And please rate them on a scale from zero to 10, especially on their strategy uh, clarification, their understanding of the uh, of the social issues and the contribution to the grantees, to the field, and also to the communities, and their relationship with the grantees. So based on this, <coughs> this investigation, we get about 200 replies. We get the list of uh, China donors who give, make grants to China NGOs. We get a list of overseas foundations 
they make grants to China NGOs. And we get uh, rent points of uh, each grant makers from the perspective of China NGOs. And what we find? We find about only about 2% of our foundations in China, in China, China foundations, they make grants to NGOs. In 2013, there are, about, uh, there are 50 China foundations that make grants, about 1.5% of all foundations. And in the last year, there are 93 China foundations make grants, about 2%. So it's, now it's grow. But, oh. but all these 93, these all 93 foundations in the last year, only 17 foundations make grants to more than five NGOs. It means the rest of the foundations make grants only not regularly, <laughs> very randomly, yeah. And also the, the, the overseas foundations are leaving. Oh. Are leaving, did you are say? Are leaving. Ah, okay. Yeah. In 2013, there are, there are 98 overseas foundations make grants in China. But in the last year, there are only 33. So it's a decrease. I think it's very rapidly. Perhaps in, the, uh, in this year and the next year, there will be much less. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it can't work. <coughs> According to the funds, about the funds, about 2% of the money, 2% of philanthropy funds going, going to NGO. They are the most, the major of the funds are going to the foundation's own operating program, or go to the government. So only 2% of the funds go to NGOs. And also, in the civil society, in the philanthropy sector, it's also uneven. It's about 20% of NGOs get about 73% of all funds. Most of the NGOs get very, very little funds. I guess perhaps the funding foundations, the grant makers are surrounded by some active NGOs very tightly, and the grant makers are perhaps a little reluctant to, to go out to find other uh, partners. Now, you, uh, in China, the grant makers are quite young. They are uh, less than 10 years old, and they uh, about the uh, rating points from the perspective of uh, China NGOs. The China grant makers are lag behind from the overseas foundations. Uh, according to the, our inv investigation, the China foundations trust the NGO less than overseas foundations. Their strategies are always changing, not stable. And uh, they have difficulties to, to, to define and analyze social issues, and uh, they don't have their very stable uh, theory of uh, change. And uh, their staff, their program officers are quite young, and they are uh, inexperienced. There's no internal training system for them. And, uh, you know, they are work very hard, and their get their paid are very low. So the turnover rate of the program office mm -hmm. is very high. Mm -hmm. So I think the China uh, granting make grant makers, they have still a long way to go. They need to improve their management, their, uh, improve their grant making skills, and uh, so we think the learning in a uh, in organized way, in you know, a professional way, perhaps be the priority for the China grant makers. So in the last year, in the 2015, supported by the Ford Foundation Beijing office, and also uh, the five China leading foundations, we established the China Donors Roundtable. Uh, China, uh, the CDR is a 
platform of the grant makers. It's created by the uh, grant makers and for the grant makers. We, we hope to explore the ex, uh, effective approach to make grant making and to build the capacity uh, of them to address social problems. Our CDR's clients, the target clients, are uh, the foundations that make grants to NGOs. As NGOs, uh, sometimes they also play the role of grant makers, of CSR department. Mm -hmm. They give the money to NGOs and also some Chinese government. Now in China, the China government also purchase, purchase so many uh, social services from, from NGOs directly. Mm -hmm. So these are our four uh, target clients. We organize the peer learning uh, activities at the individual level of uh, program officers and also at the organizational, uh, organizational level for their uh, CEOs. It's a peer learning activity. We also conducted uh, peer consulting activity to help China grant makers to refine their program, to refine their strategies. We developed some uh, case studies of best practice of grant making. We develop some rules to uh, how to operate in the foundations about the governance, about the, uh, the codes of conduct of a, a program officers, something like that. Uh, I know there are many associations of uh, grant makers in China, and when this festival uh, is, uh, is going to hold in the Ford Foundation, big office ask us to attend this and to make friends for, with you. I'm going to learn a lot from you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, I would like to share my uh, appreciation to the host of this event, the Philanthropy in Indonesia. I feel very pleasant to work with this organization. In the past uh, two weeks, I keep emailing each other f from time to time. When I send the email during the midnight, I can get a reply <laughs> in five minutes. <laughs> so this kind of communication really gave me a, a strong confidence for the future of partnership between the Indonesia philanthropy sector and the Chinese philanthropy sector. Both of us, we work very hard. We are hardworking people, especially for the civil society organization. <laughs> Thank you for Natasha. Thank you for your email. <laughs> you are the ambassador of the civil society in Indonesia. Um, secondly, I would like to appreciate this kind of event. I'm very uh, surprised. I feel surprised to see uh, Erna in, t in the morning. She was in our office five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about cooperation. Now I'm here. And just in 10 minutes, I saw Lawrence Lin from Singapore join into this conference hall. Yeah, a leader of the Asia Philanthropy Circle. So I feel so excited to see all of our old friends coming from different countries to Jakarta to meet each other. So Jakarta is becoming a center of philanthropy for Asia, and uh, it's a good meeting point. So in the future, we can take this place, take Jakarta, becoming a, a country, a city, for the mutual understanding, for the future partnership. Uh, in the afternoon, uh, I will take uh, like uh, 10 minutes to give you, uh, to give you uh, share some of our fundings. Uh, some inspiration because of the speech of Carolina in the morning. In the morning, Carolina talking about the SDG goal, talk about transparency, talk about the sharing of data. Now I will use 10 minutes to talk about how transparency and uh, data sharing help us, help all of us to become more influential. I come here represent two organizations. One is WINS. WINS is a, a global, it's kind of a the association of uh, association. All its members is supporting organization and the association from different countries. So for example, uh, when we host some event, it's our member are like uh, Philanthropy, Indonesia, Philippine Foundation Center, or some organization, some consulting firm who offer service for the grant makers. So that's uh, wins. In this conference room, if you work for grant makers, you're welcome to join wins to become a part of global movement to promote this kind of build the infrastructure of international philanthropy sector. 
The second organization is I represent China Foundation Center. My colleague Zhi Yan just showed this charter in another way. It shows the development of Chinese foundation sector. In the past 10 years, because of the economic development, the social sector in China developed very fast too. According to the statistic of China Foundation Center, by yesterday, we have 5,200 Chinese foundations. The SDG goal. <coughs> In the morning, Karin Arashi mentioned who are the several stakeholders who are in this part. WINS is part of the SDG goal, this movement. We try to work together with the Foundation Center and other organizations to build an online data platform to show the impact, to show the influence of civil society organization by data. We can see one of our strong stakeholders is the French via Indonesia. Thank you for all the effort and contribution from the French Pia Indonesia. We who help us get the data and to show the impact by number. This is some quote from the video in the morning. Basically, data and transparency can tell us who is doing what, what results do we have, and where are we. In the morning, when Karina showed the website of SDG founder platform, I'm worried about if we show the same picture or not. <laughs> Fortunately, we chose a different one. <laughs> you like the first page, I like the database. <laughs> so this shows, if you go to this website, we go to website, you can see it's an online database. You can just click the different button to check how according to different uh, goals how much money we spent from for different countries. That's very, how to say, vivid. It's easier to understand. For example, if we take the seven goals, or 17 goals, we can, we see the top two goals, which where civil society organization work, is the first one, the red one is education, the green one is healthcare. So those two fields, areas, is uh, where we are working on. So if any of us, we work in the education field, we can go to this website to find out who else working in the same field. If we work in the healthcare issue, we can go to website to filter who is the founder, who is the implementer very easily. And we also can use this kind of database to show our projection to our founder to tell them, okay, you can see a lot of people they take care of like the education and healthcare, but no one care about poverty alleviation. So where the, we can become the pioneer of poverty alleviation according to the data. So that's the power of data, the power of data sharing and the power of transparency. So I just uh, take an example. If we go there to collect Indonesia, to check the information about Indonesia, we can see, okay, in the, during 2010 to 2013, internationally, we got 109, uh, 198 million US dollars invested into Indonesia in terms of the SDG goal. And uh, if you click the, the button, you can see the, who is the grant maker and who is the recipient and how much money that the uh, local NGO got, and for what? It's maybe it's in, in different language, <laughs> which I couldn't speak. <laughs> it's a one million, one million US dollars for the quality education near Jakarta. And then I want to use the final slides to show the theory of change or logic model for data-driven or transparent philanthropy sector. All of us, we can position ourselves in either the green one, the blue one, or the orange one. We may be the founder, the grant-making foundation. We may, may be the implementer, the NGO, or the think tank. So based on this kind of, uh, it's like a value chain to show 
the money go from the founder to the implementer to offer service for the beneficiary. In the past decades, the NGO is a big challenge. It's a big challenge for us to explain what our impact is to the founder to get more money. But in the future, if we can build a strong infrastructure to build a, a better indicator system like SDG Go, we can use different indicators to track our social impact. In the morning, our young lady talked about the, the no poverty and the quali uh, qualified education. So we can use some indicators to track our progress, to tell our founder what we have achieved. For example, we, may, uh, we raise the quality of education. We uh, reduce the poverty level in our city. Those kind of indicators can help us explain what's our impact, what's our influence. And the, the, on the bottom, there is the in structured and connected information and the knowledge. When all of us, we work together, work on the transparency and the data sharing, we can build a strong knowledge pool. From this pool, we can get a lot of insights to help us make smarter decisions, make efficient decisions, and even to show our strong social impact to the founders. So then we can see a greater impact of us, of our NGOs. In the future, <coughs> China Fund Center, because of the support of Ford Foundation, thanks David, and uh, the Beijing office gave us uh, another grant to build a cloud computing platform for Chinese NGOs to, collect, um, to build a, like an information center. Because for an NGO, it's very hard to hire high professional talents, uh, especially engineers. But China Fund Center, we will build an engineer. We will collect, recruit an engineer and build an information center based on cloud computing technology. In the future, if, if no matter how small your NGO is, you can enjoy the high technology, the big data technology, the mobile technology without any uh, engineer background. So with this kind of technology and big data, in the future, we believe we will amplify our social impact. We can maximize our social impact. That's the, how transparency and uh, data to change our life, to change our sector. We are looking forward to working together with uh, Philanthropia Indonesia and uh, all of you in the future. Thank you very much.